Hi, hi, and welcome to today's podcast. With me today is my friend Serun. Hi. And we're going to have a chat about absolutely nothing and everything. Yes. Are you up for that? I think so. Okay. So just to get things started, where, where did you grow up? In Reykjavik or? Yes, in Reykjavik. Okay. In City child. <laughs> City child. Yes. Okay. In what neighborhood was that? Uh, near to Kringlan, 108. Okay, yeah. so the same place your parents still live, or? Yeah. yeah, okay. They bought the house when I was one years old. Okay, that's mm. cool. Yep. I moved, moved a lot when I was, uh, when I was growing up. Uh, begin, my first year I lived in Vík in Mirtal, mm. then I moved to Reykjavík, Alfheimar, mm. and from there to Mosesbær. Yeah, I, I stayed in the same uh, primary school for, for 11 years. Okay. Because we had the five-year-old uh, class. Isak school? No, no, Alta middle school. Okay. Yeah. Okay, they had the five years old, because I went to five-year-old school in yeah. Isak school. Yes, it was uh, something that started, my sister was in the first class, uh, born in 78. Okay. And I don't know if they still have it, but... Uh, I'm 79, so yeah. that probably was the same thinking going on. Yeah. They said to my parents, I was totally not ready. <laughs> 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 Only thing I remember from there was that I was eating my wax colors. <laughs> <laughs> I was told not to, and I was told I would never grow up to be big if I ate my wax colors. I was always <laughs> going to be small. And I thought it was BS, so I ate more. Of course. <laughs> I remember one of my first assignments in school was to uh, draw the schoolhouse. Okay. And uh, for me, it was, I was thinking big and I wanted to draw it like it was. Okay. So I ended up drawing uh, from what it would look from, from above. Okay. So everything would be correct. <laughs> <laughs> and nobody got my drawing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you were, you were looking for like an overhead. To Photo yeah. of the thing. Yes. From a plane. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, okay. And how was your school experience? It was fine for the first two years, but yeah. then uh, I think I have some dysgraphia or something because uh, the teachers started complaining about I didn't have the fine movements and uh, my reading was unreadable. Unri yeah. My writing was unreadable. Uh -huh. No and, bad feeling. And, uh, <laughs> I wasn't paying attention, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, so uh, yeah. when the teachers started to complain, I stopped liking them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. somehow just how it worked back then. You yes. weren't, if you didn't function, there was just something wrong with you, and that was that. Yes. Now they have all kinds of, uh, what do you call it, when you go to the doctor and they find you have HD and... Eight. HD or ADD? I suck at acronyms. <laughs> I cannot do them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was a different thing back then. Because yeah. I, I remember pretty much the same thing. I, mm -hmm. I didn't want to do homework. And at a very young age, I decided I was not going to do that. And, and I was always having run-ins. And, and that kind of shapes you when you're at that age it does and yeah. and i remember like my mission in the last few years in school was to do as little as possible and get as best grades as i could yeah. by not failing <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah everything over 4.5 is a waste of time exactly yeah. <laughs> but uh i always had the the math I, I somehow i was always good at math okay so i always had the 110 to uh yeah, okay. Of my, uh, <laughs> okay. Grades. So, so math came easy for you? Yes. Yeah. Because I remember just being a general nuisance in like the youngster schools. And when we came to what we call here, Gakko, yeah. or Gakkra Eskole, which is when you're 13, then kind of everything changes for me. Yeah. I, I would start drinking, and we had this like, all my friends were the troublemakers in school, and that was our thing. Of course. <laughs> uh, 
And I was wondering, was that the same for you or? Sort of. Yeah. Like I, um, I had a pretty rough time. Uh, the kids were picking on me and my girlfriends uh, around 11, 12, they just stopped talking to me. Okay. So I sort of found the troublemakers from the other schools to hang with and the nerds. And uh, in seventh grade, I was playing a lot of Dungeons and Dragons and stuff like that. And yeah, in Gakko, we I started drinking a bit. Uh, it became a bit more problematic in the ninth grade. Yeah. Yeah. I remember I remember these years too because we did that also. We played the A D and D it was called. A D and D yeah. of course. Yeah. <laughs> and it's funny because kind of with kids I know who had similar experiences with the drinking at a young age and everything kind of falling apart. I imagine it's maybe from the same source. It's nice just to pretend to be doing something else with somebody else. It is. So it's kind of a getaway in a way. Like I like I used drugs and alcohol just to get away. And I think in the same sense we were using that game just to get away. Just to get away, yeah. yeah. And for uh, many years through my teenage years uh, I always wanted to play as well as you. So maybe it helped me have a bit more control over <laughs> my uh, teenage trouble years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's also, it's, it's fascinating because I've been kind of looking at this kind of, how do I say it, reminiscing about why and because now I have kids at that age, mm -hmm. I have a 13 year old and a 15 and an 18 and a 16, 18, 14, I'm sorry, I messed it up. Mm. Uh, Changes so quickly. <laughs> it, yeah, every year, apparently. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so I've been kind of thinking back, how was it for me and, 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 and why did I choose the path that I chose? choose? Mm. And, and also, just as a parent, am I able to do kind of steer away from that? And so I kind of just... Because my experience was when I was growing up that my parents were perfect people. They did no wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, I kind of never mes measured up, if you know what I mean. Yeah. And so when I did something wrong, I just went into hiding with it and told nobody about it. And I've been kind of trying to avoid that with my kids. And they know my flaws and they know how... Because I think it's important just for kids to know that life isn't always perfect. It can be fucking hard sometimes. Yeah, I think it's also like uh, with my parents, my, my uh, me and my mother actually fought a lot. Yeah. And, and I couldn't, uh, I didn't really trust her. Mm. And I think that was a factor. And, and also they were always perfect and they never did wrong. So mm -hmm. I still sometimes feel it in, in our uh, conversations today that uh, things are supposed to be this way. And like, <laughs> Yes, for you, <laughs> <laughs> not for everybody else. Uh, yeah, it's, it's funny. I think this is a generational thing. Maybe. Uh, I think things are changing in these, these lines, I think. Yeah. Because when we were growing up, I think the mentality was that we're going to show him perfect and then he's going to exceed that. I think exactly. that was probably the thinking that was going on. Yeah. But it's hard when the bar is set higher than you can reach. It, it is. <laughs> it is. And, and their perfect way of perfect isn't so uh, good. Uh, I remember like a couple of years ago, my uh, parents' friends were over f for a visit. Yeah. And uh, I had been staying with my parents because uh, I was fixing my apartment. And uh, uh, there was... Um, Pieta, uh, something in. Yeah. It's uh, for um, prevention of suicide and for uh, help. And they were opening, and there were some concerts, and I was telling my parents, friends about it. Yeah. And my parents totally froze up because they had lost a child to suicide. Okay. Which was the reason I wanted to tell them about something awesome and new. Mm -hmm. And they were glad to hear it, but my parents, like, uh oh. She oh. said the bird, oh. no, no, no. <laughs> Do not venture on the minefield. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, and and yeah. that's the, I think, one of the differences between the generation. We 
we talk about the taboos. Yeah, and yeah, definitely. I uh, think that's a very good thing. Yeah. And I have, I've actually, I'm still running in these kind of problems because I'm kind of that way. I don't talk about my, I can, like I go to my meetings and talk about stuff, but when I have problems at home, like with my wife and stuff, she has to fucking drag that shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> and she's helped me a lot with that because I kind of just don't want to show weakness or something. I don't know what it is. I think, uh, I think we all do that. Yeah. But uh, when it comes to other people, I'm at least more open to uh, touching the subjects yeah. than... Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, th I don't know. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a, a guy girl thing, kind of, kind of too. Yeah, maybe. Because she kind of can get into tough areas and talk to people, and they open up. And I'm, I'm kind of more rigid in it. Mm -hmm. Maybe just because I, ha I haven't practiced as much at, at being there on the honest level, and yeah. I think maybe this is going to help me with that, just to keep how to have conversations mm -hmm. because it's it can be tricky <laughs> it can yeah and so yeah you grew up and you had a little like a like a tough time growing up yep and that kind of gets you places <laughs> for me at least <laughs> that, that got me places <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i, I went uh, i was 17 when i decided to uh, go to uh, Austria and learn German. And I think it was a step to just to move out of the house from my parents. Yeah. And also, um, I had been working for a Domino's Pizza. Yeah, yeah. And they kind of screwed me over and I had a lawyer and I got a lot of money. Okay. So um, I decided to use it on traveling. Okay. Which is one of my main hobbies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How was that? That was different. Okay. How did that go over with the parents? My parents were uh, supportive. Okay. But they weren't so happy because I, in the end, messed it up. Like we do. Like we do. <laughs> <laughs> they were going to come visit me in August, but I had to leave in July. Okay. Yeah. So. Were you, were you living with somebody else there or were you just on your own? or? I was on my own. I, uh, for, I got help through some... Um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, organization. Okay. To get into a school and uh, find housing. Okay. And I was living in like a college house where you can rent a room with a bathroom. Okay. And uh, you have access to kitchen and washing machine. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Uh, so you went out to study. That was the. That was. The plan. That was the plan. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I. I Ich spreche ein bisschen Deutsch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so you, so you got something from that, though. Yes, I did. Yeah, I. That was kind of a fancy of mine, just to move somebody else and just get away. That yeah. was. I never did though. For some reason, maybe because Domino's didn't screw me over and I didn't have the maybe. money. To <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Damn Domino's. <laughs> Should have hired you. <laughs> yeah. 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 And yeah, I know I know you're working now in this kind of school thing. Recovery college. Yeah. Yes. And yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yes. Yeah. I think so too because just having that thing is a I think a blessing. It is. What's what's that about or can you get into that or Yeah, yeah. No? Um, it's a school. Everybody almost no, I can't say everybody. Okay. We uh, have open applications for anybody who has dealt with any kind of uh, uh, mental uh, struggle. Okay. Anybody who has a family who has dealt with m mental struggle. Okay. And anybody working for the health um, and hospital uh, environment or uh, welfare can also apply. Okay, so it's for people who are, who are having mental struggles and also professionals that are working yes with and the, same the family of the ones who are okay yeah i didn't know that yeah and uh, it doesn't matter if you have had a minor anxiety problem or yeah, yeah. if you have uh, 
have to live in a housing because you're not able to uh, take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. Every everywhere in between, people we get are are um, all everywhere on this scale. Okay, and and how how does this work? If I if I were to go, if you were to come to the school, you would just uh, apply. Yeah, uh, you could send the email or make a call or come visit us, and. Uh, it doesn't matter uh, in which town or city you live in. We are open to everybody, but we are stationed in Reykjavik. Okay. And uh, people uh, choose what uh, seminars they're interested in. Okay. And if you would choose everything, then you would be in the school three days a week, two hours per day. Okay. And yeah. And 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 the the meaning is just to get people. Educated. Edu educated about their situation and how to... How to, how to handle it. I mean, we teach uh, about anxiety, about t depression, and of course how to deal with it. And mm -hmm. we teach also about uh, being in the now and uh, about self-respect, about um, communication and uh, how to set boundaries. Uh, we teach a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's that's cool because of course here in Iceland we, we have very high rates of depression. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> Probably because of all the darkness and the bad weather and yeah. stuff. And, and also I like to say mental health is just like normal health. You mm -hmm. can't get through life without getting a cold. Mm -hmm. And it's the same. You will always struggle sometimes with uh, your mind. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. And I think we're especially just that particular school has done i think a lot just to open the subject up a little bit yes because i believe so it's, 10 years ago we didn't talk very openly about mental illness for ex example here yeah it was pretty close you just it spooked you and you didn't want to kind of know <laughs> yeah so i think it has done wonders for that. It has. When I went, went through my first psychosis, okay. I hadn't even heard about it. Okay. I didn't know what was going on, and I just connected it to schizophrenia, okay. which is probably uh, one of the most difficult diseases to deal with. Okay. So you're, so you're dealing with that? Yeah. I have a bipolar with the possibility of psychosis, Okay. which is rare for bipolar, but... Bipolar is pretty. Uh, what is bipolar? Because this is this is again names you kind of hear. <laughs> yeah. And and I think maybe with a limited understanding of what it means to actually have it. Yeah, and, and it's really also hard to explain because we're like thousands of people who have been who have bipolar and we experience it yeah. maybe in different ways. But uh, to have bipolar is to. Um, you have to go through um, times when you, um, you you go up like manic state, even just the hypomania, just the small stages, and maybe a lot of those for a month. Okay. And then you have the depression. And how, how, how does that feel? The, is it like a happy place, full of energy and? Sometimes. Sometimes. For me, okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I kind of like my uh, hypomanias and when I'm happy, but yeah. I've also had the being hyper and everything is springing and I can't sleep and I'm really depressed at the same time. Okay. So that's probably the most difficult part about it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can imagine when you're yeah. kind of hyper and you're not, you're not, not happy. feeling it. <laughs> and nothing gives you joy. Yeah. So, so enough, everything's kind of pointless, but you can't sleep. <laughs> okay. But if I could back up a little, when did you find out about this? Um, how, how did that came to be? Because... I can imagine you probably had been suffering through that for some time before you realized something was not as it should be. Yes, I, I probably have. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, I was seeing a doctor and about 25 years old, I was really depressed and and I had been clean for some time, but my life wasn't working. and And um, he said I had a lot of anxiety and depression and I was like okay and uh, I didn't know what to do with that mm -hmm. and a few years later I had started using and partying a lot and 
Then I start going through the psychosis. And I had a few of them before I managed to get clean again. Yeah. So when the psychosis started coming, my doctor at the hospital, my new doctor, he told me it's most likely bipolar. Okay. And uh, then after I had been clean for a while, he said, it is bipolar. It's not something more difficult. Okay. Yeah. And I can imagine, because I think many people don't realize this, but but a lot of a lot of times when people are starting use using drugs a lot, mm -hmm. it's because of something underlying, like you're kind of trying to self medicate in a way just to make you feel better. I believe so too. Yeah, and also I think it's be I think it's also has a lot to do with connections. Yeah, uh, with people because. Mm -hmm. We as people, we are not I, no, nobody is an island. We can't fix it on our own. Mm -hmm. And as I see it for myself, I had grown distant from my family. I was trying to make new friends. I had nobody who was in my team, like nobody. I had a lot of people around me, but I still wasn't belonging. Yeah, I, I, I totally know what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> I totally know what you mean. So uh, I think that's also a big part of it. When you can't belong somewhere, uh, you try maybe to um, escape. Yeah, definitely. I can, I can, I can, I can definitely relate to that. But it's also tricky because, if I understand it right, that before you can kind of deal with your mental issues, you have to get clean first. If you're, if you're, if you're, if you have went down that path. Yeah. And. And it's something I think you have to take at least together. Yeah. And uh, it's really hard to just be clean and not deal with your... Uh, yeah, I can imagine because you're doing all the right things and it's still not... Working. Working. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, can, I can imagine and that. If you, if you have trouble getting clean, your uh, disease is always going to come up. Mm -hmm. Like in the description of bipolar, it says that people who with bipolar tend to use during their manic episodes mm -hmm. and that's true for also non-addicts but yeah yeah so it's it's difficult to know the parts so yeah so maybe if you're not sure and you don't have a diagnosis mm -hmm. you have to be clean for a little while before it yeah. a correct diagnosis can kind yes. of come through and i think this is a this is a this is of course, it's hard to get clean if you're down that hole already. Yes. But this is like a, another level on that. Yeah, you have to manage both. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It can be quite hard. Yeah, I can imagine. I remember like one of a few of the worst days when, when I was clean, was getting clean this time, maybe had a year or something. Yeah. And I, I was going through these depression states. And I had to just make a deal with myself. It's okay to just do nothing except for going to a meeting today and uh, two washing machines. And that's enough for today. And some of the days I just went through days dealing with myself. Like if I do this, it's okay just to be depressed and watch TV. <laughs> yeah, I think that's, 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 that's a lesson, a hard lesson too, because society kind of lays that on you that you have to do loads of things yes you have to have a work a job you have to do this you have to do that your space has to be clean every yeah. and and that expect ex expectation thank you very much <laughs> it's probably still like an added step of pressure when you're down that hole yeah and i think talking about this openly, how things work, is going to maybe soften the blow. And I think that's where the school you're working in comes in very strong. Yeah. Just to let people know it's okay when you cannot do things. And it's okay to ask for help when you can not do things. That's probably the hardest thing to do is to admit that you can't handle something. Yeah, because that's a big no-no, to show yeah. weakness somehow. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but absolutely necessary if you want to go somewhere yeah and do something with it and how how is it now have you have you seen like you started here and 
or things getting better or easier or ma more manageable or how, how, how does it work? It's a lot more manageable for me Okay. Uh, now. Uh, when I have my manic episodes, I, I have to take care not to uh, take my uh, cart to the store and stuff like that. <laughs> 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 or make a list before I go to uh, the shop. Okay. <laughs> I want to buy food because I, I might have a bright idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, so so I, I try to be careful with making decisions and uh, but I do allow myself to uh, uh, w like window shop on the computer and like think about I want to change my apartment and I make drawings and and um, save pictures from this and that that I want to do and then I just look at it later to uh, reevaluate. Oh, that's a good plan. Yeah, <laughs> instead of doing things in a manic state. And, and I, I can kind of like most of the time put my energy into something that I'm okay with doing. Okay. So that's, that's how I deal with my uh, manic episodes. And when I get to the point where I can't sleep, yeah. uh, I have medicine for, uh, to, to put me down. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't take, um, I had actually a bit of, oops. That's okay. Yeah. I had a liver problem for, from the drugs I was taking before. Yeah. So I don't take um, drugs for uh, uh, bipolar. Okay. So I only have the sleep medicine when I, when I uh, need them. Okay. And for my depressive uh, episodes. That's kind of what I thought of bipolar was. You go up and then you go way the fuck down. Uh, that's, yeah, that, that was kind of my image of it. I, I'm not sure how correct it is, but it's also like there is bipolar one and yeah. bipolar two, and in bipolar one, uh, you're manic. You have to have gone through a few manic episodes that last more than month, more, more than a, at least few months, mm -hmm. and a depression following that's also a few months. But if you don't fall into that category you uh, are put into the bipolar two. Okay. And that has all the varieties. Okay. Uh, I, I know a girl who never has depressions, but she has uh, different stages of manic episodes. Okay. Uh, up to the point where she needs to get locked up just before Christmas because she's too high in manic state. Okay. So it's really different and individual and uh, yeah. So it's it's like a variety of, of stuff that can that can show itself. But do you have like because I have sometimes wondered wondered this about myself mm -hmm. because I I kind of go to this routine that I I kind of go up and I think I could do everything mm -hmm. and mostly usually I execute very fast <laughs> and do things to, and then I go a little bit down. But I think. I'm not sure where the line kind of lies because maybe in some in, in some instances it's kind of normal. Yeah. Kind of just how life works a little I bit. I think everybody goes up yeah. and down through the line through through life of course. Yeah. But yeah. But it's probably just at that stage where it's unmanageable where the line kind of lies. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think so. It it becomes everything becomes a problem when it's unmanageable. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. Yeah. And I'm, I'm also I've been kind of. My wife started to work in this field also, mm -hmm. so it came came to me as a very, because when I when I when I was having my worst times, I was put into a mental institute at one time, mm -hmm. and. And that was just like a storage room. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, 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 there, there was no actual work going on there. It was just like a storage unit for crazy people, <laughs> and 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 now that I that I see how the system has kind of changed. Now they have like halfway homes and stay in therapies and and all kinds of kind of good stuff is going on. Bata Skolin, the one yeah. you were at, and it just. It was a pleasant surprise to see that the old way of thinking about just storing people somewhere mm -hmm. is kind of going away. Yeah. 
but we still have the storage room at the hospital. Yeah, yeah. Where people go where um, when they have a sudden episode or a, or a, or at some kind of a breaking point. Yeah. And there's such a big waiting list that I'm really happy for all the other um, places you can go to. Yeah, yeah like the Piet, Pieta. Pieta and uh, Hura, uh, a lot of places people can seek help. And uh, a lot of programs are, are like in Klapper, there is a, a lot of, uh, like they have a team for people with bipolar, they have a team for people who are dealing with PTSD. They have a team for a lot of things today yeah. where you can go through a long-term program, mm -hmm. which is meant to help you uh, a lot more than a 10 day stay at the psych board would ever yeah. do. And also because th the thing that made me kind of happy when I kind of saw these, this change is happening, mm -hmm. that it's, it's not just about medication. Yeah. Because it's not like a decade ago, it was there. It was just about medication, yes. it seemed to me. Not not about, about helping people to work, to get in a kind of a recovery st status. Yeah. And live with, and just, if you... Uh, I know what you mean. Yeah. And, and <laughs> like, uh, the hospital has a different... Um, idea about full recovery than maybe we at the recovery college do. Okay. Like for, let's say a person with schizophrenia hear, hears voices and uh, first it's really fucking scary and you end up in a hospital and think you're insane and then you just realize you're not gonna get rid of your voices mm -hmm. and, and you've been stable maybe for a few years and like we call it recovery when you can live with your voices and uh, can still have a pleasurable life. I would, Maybe, I would agree. Yeah, <laughs> but you still have the voices. Uh -huh. So the hospital would never say that you are fully recovered because the problem didn't go away. Mm -hmm. But we think living with the problem and not making it a problem is recovery. I would agree on that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like totally. Yeah. And yeah, it's, it's mental illness is a scary thing. <laughs> it is. It is a scary thing because somehow just in an instant everything is changed. Yeah, but getting a diagnosis doesn't mean that everything has changed. Like I was quite old, 25, 6 years, no, I was 27, 8, yeah. when I had my diagnosis finally correct. Yeah. And I made it change me. Okay. Then I had to break through the wall because putting like a bipolar sign on me doesn't mean that I'm not the daughter I was to my parents and I'm still the friend that uh, I have been through with my friends. It just doesn't change me. Mm -hmm. It just explains some things for me. So, so it never, it's never going to change that I am able to uh, do a lot of artwork and, and I like crocheting and, and that I'm interested in AD and D and, and nerdy stuff. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't change who I am no. in any way. So it's scary to hear it. And I hope more people can go through uh, getting a diagnosis without putting themselves. Like I felt like I put myself as a, a different kind of person. I, I wasn't, mm, my struggle was getting through it. Okay. I thought I would always be sick and always have to be uh, waiting for a new psychosis to um, come. That would hinder your life in a major way. Yeah. But the, when you talked about kind of breaking through, it was exactly that, just coming into terms with illness and mm -hmm. keep on going. Yeah. Yeah. And and uh, that's what I did in, in a way. I mean, I had, through my uh, illnesses and, and getting clean and everything, uh, I went on uh, government funding because of, uh, because of uh, <laughs> my illnesses. Yeah, yeah. And, and I still am partly uh, government funded because I haven't, I only work like 
I only work. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't work full time. No. Uh, and that works fine for me. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's a definite pos a, a big positive because I know what you do and I know you're doing good at what you're doing. Yeah. And and I've also seen you do a lot of good things in other places in life. Yes. And and it's kind of that's kind of just the big one why I want to talk to you about this because I have seen you do a lot of amazing stuff and it made me kind of happy to see that it's not just possible just to get by but to have a an awesome life yeah after the fact if you know what I mean it is totally possible yeah and I'm still following my dreams I, I hope to apply for a university one day okay. uh, I am doing a bit of traveling which is one of the things I love yeah, yeah. and I am doing uh, I'm playing Pathfinder which is like a new AD&D okay. thing tomorrow night with a few friends and okay and uh, yeah my life is uh, really nice yeah I like my life uh, and the strangest thing is that I like myself <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a big one <laughs> yeah that's a big one <laughs> <laughs> because when you don't get you have to you have to kind of begin getting on that place yeah you have to like yourself before anything positive can happen in your life I guess <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 it's it's fun to hear it's yeah. good to hear kind of because that's partly what I wanted to do exactly with this because I'm blessed with knowing a lot of people in difficult places mm -hmm. who are kind of like you said just plowing through and getting getting to the other side yeah and I think that's a beautiful thing and I think it's also important just to have these talks because I think everybody knows somebody who is struggling with yeah. mental illness at some level and just to have the openness about it it's okay to face it and it's okay to take the next step totally. and seek help it is and uh, if somebody out there is uh, <laughs> struggling just day by day yeah yeah and and if you're in a place like this like an institution like Pata School, and you mm. can apply for that yeah how, and do you just book an appointment or how how does uh, that work well, we have a homepage, patoskole.is, mm -hmm. and uh, there you can find an email where you can apply, apply through email. Okay. You can make a call or have an appointment and come to uh, look at the school or get more information. So, uh, yeah. That's a cool thing. What do you want to go study? What's, what's, what's the dream? Psychology. Psych oh, <laughs> surprise. <laughs> surprise, surprise. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's that's kind of a long-term goal now, or or how? Yes. Yeah. Uh, and I, I I hope to be able to work in some uh, researches or or making new um, therapeutic uh, uh, institutions or something like that mm -hmm. in the future. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I definitely believe in that because we know this from a different place in our lives. That yes. getting into helping others with the same problem is a is a key. <laughs> it, it is a key. <laughs> it Definitely. is a key, and, and yeah. And it, and and it gives you like a unique perspective because if you're helping somebody and you know what the person you're helping is going through by your own, it's a different thing than to go see somebody who is perfectly healthy. Yeah. But it's a different connection. It is a different connection. Also, just like in the recovery college, we have a lot of uh, peer uh, trainers. Yeah. And me as a peer trainer, I don't have to have the same diagnosis to connect to uh, another student. No. Because uh, they know I've been through shit. Yeah. I'm not just talking for, from the book. Yeah. And uh, that's also one of the great thing about the school is that we are always two specialists, one from uh, being uh, experienced mm -hmm. and one from acad academia. Yeah. So we think that when we put those two things together, that we can have the best uh, answers. I would totally agree. And that's kind of just the perfect way because you kind of get, get away from things getting weird. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, and you also have that, that 
connection, which I think is definitely just the key. Mm. And yeah, I, I, I have kind of, kind of hopes that our education system is going to change in ways. Yeah, me too. For I that too, because you don't have to be a parent to have value, if you know what I mean. Exactly. Just to learn from the book and go to a test and see what you remember from the book you're learning. Yeah. I think this is a system that has to kind of fade away and we yeah. have to find a new way to do things. Take out the test for the younger kids and yeah. put more play into it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I believe that. It, that and, and also start teaching them young about, uh, about self and feelings and stuff like that. Yeah, definitely. We were, I was talking to Atte, the singer from Solstav the other day, mm -hmm. and he was saying, why the fuck do we not teach meditation exactly. in kindergarten? That would be a perfect thing. Yes. Just to teach kids how to meditate. And at where a young was age. the education about normal stuff like taxes and, ah, and money? Yeah. <laughs> exactly the same thing I said to him. <laughs> yep. Practical things. Yeah, we didn't mm. learn too much of practical things. No, in no, definitely not. But we did learn um, uh, about uh, what do you call it? <laughs> yeah, a, a, lot, a lot, of lot of math, a lot, a lot of Icelandic. Grammar rules. Oh yeah, <laughs> a lot of Viking history. <laughs> Viking history can be cool, but when it's just about the the family tree, the family tree, <laughs> it's not really interested. <laughs> no. No. Yeah, yeah, Definitely. and Danish, really. And, and, yeah, that's. I have never understood that. Why the fuck do we learn Danish from a young age? Yep. We have the smallest language in the world, almost I yep. think, and then we. Kids. Kind of learn another rarity f yeah. from Denmark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, it's funny. It yeah. is. Definitely. Is there something else you want to add? Um, no. I'm, I'm <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah. This has been pleasant. It's been a good talk. It has. Well, thank you for coming on such a short notice. Thank you. <laughs> thank you.